Hi, my name is Dan Oaks. I'm the creator of Cookin. Just a few days ago, I sent an email out and I asked, which Cookin feature would you like me to demonstrate? And the response was great. We got a lot of people who participated in the poll. And as you can see here, how to use the snippet tool and the scan it feature was the one that most people wanted to see how to use better. How to enter recipes quickly came in a close second, so I'll go ahead and do that one next time. But for now, let's take a look at how to use the snippet tool and how to use scan it in Cookin. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Cookin. And as an example, you know, just the other day, I heard about a really good recipe. Kathy and I were at the restaurant and we had this chocolate lava cake and I heard from a friend that there's a good recipe on the Six Sisters blog so I'm gonna do a search for that and see if I can find it okay Six Sisters stuff that's the website and let's take a look at this recipe Six Sisters stuff oh yeah look at that chilies yes oh that's the one Okay, I want this recipe and I want it and put it in my database so I can have it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and click this capture button. But see what happened is the web page, because it's a blog and it's not formatted properly, so Cookin's unable to capture this automatically. Ingredients are not tagged, the recipe name is not tagged, and so forth. So we're going to have to do this manually, but there's an easy way to do it using the snippet tool. So the next dialog says my perspective has changed, the views in the editor have been adjusted, and so I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, I get it. And so what it says is to return to the recipe browsing perspective, just click recipes on the toolbar. So, okay, I get it. I'm going to click OK. And then that's not going to show up again there. And so now here is this uh, web page, Six Sisters Stuff, and there's the recipe on the left. Here's the snippet tool in the middle, and here's my new recipe edit screen and cooking on the right. And so what I'm going to do now, first of all, is find the recipe name. And I think I saw it up at the top here. Okay, here it is. So I'm going to highlight this, then I'm going to click name. And cooking then puts it over here. So this was the title of the web page. Cook and try to guess at what the name is. I'm going to delete that. So, oops, here's the name of the recipe. Chili's Hot Fudge Molten Lava Cake Recipe. I'm going to even take the word recipe out. I mean, I just, it's mine, right? I'm customizing this. In fact, I'm going to put this in the Dan's Recipes Cookbook. And cooking says, oh, that doesn't exist. So I'm going to just say quick add. It's easy. I'm going to put this in the desserts chapter. Quick add. Okay, there's the cookbook, the chapter, and the recipe name. So, and you can see cooking color coded it over here. Now I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I want this picture too, first of all. I mean, look at that. So what I'm going to do is just highlight this, whoops, not that, just highlight the photo itself so it changes color like that, and then I'm going to click photo, and now cook and added it to this recipe over here, and now I'm going to scroll down some more. Okay, this part right here, that's like the description, I think, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight this here. Okay, and then I'm going to click the word description here in the snippet tool. And then Cookin's going to copy and paste it over to here for me. So it saved me all that typing time. And I'm going to keep scrolling down here. And um, you can see it's color coded. So I know I've got that part already. And now I'm going to go ahead and these are the ingredients. So I'm going to click the ingredients button here. And Cookin then puts them all in there for me. Then here's the directions. And it goes down how to serve other variations. I want all this. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this all the way up to right here and I'm going to now click the directions button and then cooking goes ahead and puts it all down there you can collapse these if you want I'm going to click here and collapse this field I'm going to click here and collapse this one now I can see all the directions so it's not crammed in that little space down in the bottom and that looks good so I'm going to expand this again and expand this okay and the last scene is um, down here Okay, look how it's color coded. Do you see that? So I know what I've done. I've got the directions, I've got the ingredients, and I've got the description, and I've got the recipe name up here and the photo. So now what I noticed is um, it says here that um, you bake it for 16 to 18 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that and click cook time, and the cooking is going to put it in there. And it looks like it makes, um, you divide the batter into 12 molds. So I think 12 is the serving size. So I'm going to click that, and Cookin's going to do that. So now that I've got all the components of this recipe, and I didn't have to type them in, I just used this snippet tool to kind of copy and paste them over easily. I'm going to click Done. 
And now cooking's got this recipe and look at it here. When I click to the view tab, there it is. Chili's hot fudge molten lava cake. Serves 12 and their cook time is 16 to 18 minutes. All right, that's good. Excellent. Now I'm going to go ahead and click the save button and cooking's going to then save the Chili's Hot Fudge Molten Lava Cake recipe in the desserts chapter of the Dan's Recipes Cookbook. I can click on that and I can see it and there it is. Now another way to use that snippet tool, let's take a look for example, let's say that I um, happen to just have the URL okay for this website so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go back into cooking. Let's say I don't have this recipe okay, um, let's say I don't didn't search for it like I did just now. I can actually click this button on the toolbar right here, the Snippet Quick Import tool. I can click that and then I can select a source and the source that I want is Import Recipe from Web Page. I can click that and now I can paste that website URL in here and click OK and Cookin is going to do the same thing. It's going to load that web page from Six Sisters and it's going to display the Snippet tool here so that I can go and do the copy and the paste using the snippet tool like I just showed you a moment ago. So you can invoke that manually by clicking this button on the toolbar. Okay, I'm going to click done now and, and now I'm going to show you. So that's the snippet tool. Okay, That's how you use this snippet tool right here. Now what I'm going to show you is how to use the snippet tool together with the scan it feature. So I'm going to click this button right here on the toolbar or uh, for the source instead of clicking import recipes from web page. I'm going to click this one right here which says import scanned recipe. And I scanned a chocolate molten cake recipe that I had printed. It was a long time ago from foodnetwork.com. So I'm going to double click that and Cookin's going to then open that file. It's a JPEG. And by the way, when you scan your recipes, every scanner has the ability to scan and save the images into a JPEG format. And so you're going to save those, you're going to scan your recipes into a JPEG format, and then you're going to just select the file that's produced, and Cookin will then OCR it, which stands for Optical Character Recognition. It's going to translate it from an image to text, like it did just now. See how, I mean, look, at if I had to type that by hand, that would take me forever. Now, I'm just joking. It didn't really scan quite right, and the reason is because it's not oriented right. And when I scanned it, I scanned it like landscape. So that's not a problem. What I'm going to do is click this edit image button. Okay, you can see that. Now you can see how it's not oriented right. So I'm just going to click this button right here and rotate the image right 90 degrees. Okay, good. Now that it's oriented right, let's try this again. I'm going to click this green checkbox right here. Cooking's going to try it again now. It's going to OCR it or it's going to take the image and it's going to convert it to text. Okay, and that worked a lot better. Now um, again, here's the image. It shows it down at the bottom. It looks right. It's oriented right now. And here's the text that was produced when Cookin translated it. And I'm just going to highlight this and click Name. And again, I'm going to go down here and look, and this is the description, recipe courtesy of Paula Dean. And the total cook time is 44 minutes. So I'm going to click Cook Time here, 44 minutes. Oh, actually, that's the total time. Whoops, I didn't mean that, so I'm going to delete it from there. Not a problem. The cook time is actually 14 minutes. That's the cook time. The prep time is 30 minutes. Prep time. And if you wanted to, you could highlight this and click clear. And then I'm going to get the ingredients next. And it looks like it had a hard time OCRing this word. It didn't get it quite right. It's got a weird thing here. So one, six, or two one ounce square. Okay, good. All right, so you can edit here in case the OCR tool scans or interprets something incorrectly, you can just edit it right in this screen. Now I'm going to just highlight the ingredients and click ingredients. And I'm going to go down here to the directions. I don't want this copyright information stuff here. I just want the directions. So I'm going to go up to here and highlight it and click directions. And now again you can see it's color coded so I can see what I got here. Oh, I missed the yield. Where is the yield? Oh, it says weld. That's supposed to be yield. It makes six cakes. Okay, so I want that as the yield. There we go, six cakes. So this looks good. I'm done, so I'm going to click the Done button right here. And I'm going to save this again in the Desserts chapter. And I want to take a look at this. And now you see in the View tab that we always keep, we attach to the uh, recipe the original scan. So you can always refer back to that if you wanted to.
So that's an easy way to get your recipes into the computer without having to type them. If I were to type all this, this would be a hassle and it would take time. So using the snippet tool in Cookin combined with Cookin's scan it feature, it's going to make it easy for you to get all those printed recipes into Cookin. If you have recipes that are written out by hand, you're not going to be able to use this tool because Cookin can't translate handwritten text or handwritten words into text in the computer. So this is only for recipes that are printed. And everybody's got them. There's all those internet recipes that you found and you printed them and you put them in a binder. Or, you know, there's that one drawer designated in the kitchen where you put all the printed pages. And now you've got a way to scan those and import those into cooking without having to retype them. Keep in mind one little tip, though, which is a lot of the time, even though this tool makes it fairly easy to do without having to retype it, a lot of times you can just search the web for that specific recipe and find it again and then click the capture button in Cookin and capture it and get it into Cookin with one click and that's even easier. And one other thing to remember, there are some limitations to this feature. For example, I'll give you an example here. If I click on source here and I've got another recipe, it's a chocolate chip cake. And I'm going to double click on this one and let Cookin import this using the scan it tool. And while it's working, I'll go ahead and show you what this recipe looks like. Let's see here, it's not that one, it's this one. Let me zoom out. Chocolate Chip Cake by Great American Recipes. It looks like this was scanned out of a magazine or a, you know, a booklet or of some sort. And we actually got this from a customer who wanted to scan this recipe into cooking using the scan it feature and the snippet tool and get it into cooking without having to retype it. But she was having difficulty. So we took a look at it. And here's the recipe now that Cookin, so Cookin took this recipe and it translated it to text. But, um, one, you know, there's some problems as you can see here. For example, if you look at this recipe, it says in a small saucepan over low heat. But when Cookin interprets this, it doesn't know that there's columns here. So it says in a small saucepan over low, and then it goes over here. And it tries to do this one half symbol and then a cup of semi sweet chocolate chips. So as it comes out in cooking, it says, in a small saucepan over low, this is the one half cup semi sweet chocolate. So it's all kind of mangled together. So recipes that are in columns like this, they're not going to work that well. And so in some cases, the scan it tool is going to be more trouble than it's worth. You can go in here and you can do portions of this and copy it into here. And you can edit this like crazy and say, no, this is one half cup of semi-sweet um, chocolate chips. And you can edit this, but by the time you're done, it's easier almost to just enter the recipe into here and say one half cup semi-sweet chocolate chips. By the way, um, Cookin has this autocomplete feature, which makes it really easy to enter your recipes quickly. And in fact, that was the next topic that we talked about here in the video demo poll that I did how to enter recipes quickly was one of the and, and, and looking at some of the recipe entry shortcuts was one of the things that a lot of you wanted me to show you so I'll do that next time and show you how to take a recipe like this one here and get that into cooking really quickly because sometimes using the scan it tool and snip it even though it's it's quick it's it's gonna it's not gonna be more grief, especially if the quality of the scan isn't very good. But if you have recipes like that one from uh, Food Network, why that one? I mean that one looked really good. It's really compressed here, so it's kind of difficult to see. But the Food Network printout was formatted very well, and it was easy to scan. So when you have recipes that are printed like that, using the snippet tool and the scan it tool makes a lot of sense, and it's gonna save you a lot of time. I hope this demo was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it helps you to get your recipes into cooking even faster. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.